today I'm super, super excited because I have a very dear friend of mine, Mark Rosenfeld, with me here today from Australia, all the way just for you. And we're talking about magic text messages and how to make him chase you. <laughs> hey, Mark. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for today. It's great to see you again, Antia. We always have so much fun on these. Thank yeah, you. totally. So, uh, so Mark, let's, let's talk about texting. And I know right now as we're recording, uh, we're obviously in a very unique situation. We're all pretty much quarantined no matter where you are in the world. And so tell me a little bit like when you see women coming to you, what do you see the first mistakes that they're making when it comes to sending text messages to the man that they love so much? Yeah, I think it's so important with text message to remember that text message is ultimately a means where you could make things a lot worse or a little bit better. <laughs> so you, 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 you have a lot to lose and, and not heaps to gain. You can certainly make gains with text, um, but obviously you're not going to win the entire experience if you only get stuck on texting, if you're only texting. Um, but I've seen plenty of examples where the wrong text, poorly timed, poorly worded, poorly toned text have mega turned a guy off. And as a guy, I can absolutely say I've experienced this as well. I've, I've interacted, dated, had friends who are so wonderful in person, but they're nightmares to text because of the tones or the messages they come across with. So it does make a big difference. It's not the whole game, obviously, but it's an opportunity to make a little ground, but, but more importantly, not make the mistakes that can really uh, mess an interaction up, especially if it's early going. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You know, sometimes when I see some screenshots from my clients, I'm like, I think that's a little too long. <laughs> so let's <laughs> talk about like, what should be the length be? What, what do you see in terms of like the length being effective? Um, does it matter? Does it not matter? And especially you as a man receiving those text messages. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a saying in texting. It's one of my four commandments, which is keep the charisma, lighten the length. All keep right. the charisma, lighten the length. Um, you have to imagine, you know, if you are, I often use the example of famous DJs because I'm a big, I'm a big music fan. And when a DJ shows up, they don't play just the music they enjoy because they have to consider what country they're in, what audience they are playing to. Um, but they can't just play the music for the audience either, because if they do that, they're going to eventually hate their job because they mm -hmm. don't have any fun. They're just kind of doing what everyone else wants instead of something they enjoy. Uh, so they have to find a balance between the two, between playing what they enjoy and what their audience wants to hear. And it's the same thing when you are delivering text messages, when you are communicating. You have to find the balance between the way you might text a girlfriend, which is often longer, it's more processing, you might have uh, outstretched conversations, versus the way your audience receives texts, which is guys are very blunt, they're very short, they're very um, just plain, kind of boring, to be honest. With yeah. text. <laughs> right. So you don't want to text like a dude because that's boring, but you also don't want to text quite the way you text the girls because it, it's going to be overwhelming for a guy. Um, and especially we can go through some of the don'ts a, a bit later on, but especially heavy conversations. Um, you don't want to be just throwing those, throwing those straight onto a text message, especially out of nowhere. It, it's almost a bit, and <laughs> I really only thought of this metaphor quite recently, but it's a little bit like the way, you know, you as a woman sexually in a sexual time, you, you don't want him to go straight into things. You know, you want him to warm up. You want him to right. uh, get you in a good space. You want him to, to just energize you, turn you up before mm -hmm. the main sex part happens. Mm -hmm. um, if you throw down a big text message, especially a, an essay, something really deep, a lot of emotions, that's kind of like how it feels to a guy, uh, which is the same as when you're in bed and he just tries to get in there way too quick right? Mm -hmm. Got to warm up to those conversations with guys. And text message is a very difficult place to do it for a number of reasons. So you want to keep the charisma, lighten the length, keep it short online, not, not without energy. You still bring your great vibes to it, but you don't want to be throwing big blocks at him because guys will get very uncomfortable with that pretty quick. 
Yeah, I, I always tell my women, look, if I take three days to read this, because I see how long it is, and I need to put some oh, time to decide. If it ever <laughs> extends beyond the length of a screen. I mean, if I see a text beyond sort of like a, a half a screen, it's, it's overwhelming. <gasps> So are you going to be like, okay, I need to shoot three more videos and then maybe... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then like, I've, like, I think I've got a 65 item to-do list and I'll get back to this on Wednesday. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's just a lot. Um, and that's actually a good man. point, right? So it sounds like there's sort of this fine balance between it feeling like a chore. It's like almost like, oh my God, I need to check this off my list versus just like, oh, hey, cool. She just texted, I'll text back. Yeah, and exactly, exactly. And... And men are always coming to women for the energetic experience and text message is no different. If we are, and this is where you can make some gains with text is if your messages are chill and they have a good vibe, they're cheerful, chill and cheerful. The guy gets a chill and cheerful vibe coming to his phone. He's like, cool, I'll text her back. Uh -huh. uh, and he's going to want to come and do that more. It's like a dog. If it gets a little treat every time it stands on its back legs, it's going to stand on its back legs more. <laughs> Whereas if you yell at it or if you, you know, if it doesn't get a good experience when it stands on its back legs, then it's not going to do that. Right. So you've got to think about, well, what if I'm the receiver, and this is probably the ultimate tech test for texts is if I'm receiving this message that I'm about to send, what energy am I feeling mm. in my body? Mm -hmm. Am I like a little upbeat, a little excited, maybe a little turned on, just a little energized? Uh, it's probably a good text. If you're feeling a little down, if it's a little heavy, uh, if it's a if it's a little overwhelming to process, or even just whelming for you is probably overwhelming for a guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then that might not be the best text. And there's totally other means to communicate that. And if you've got something on your mind that needs expressing, 100% do it. But text is not your medium for it. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the other don'ts, um, Mark? Because you were just touching on that, that you see women make all the time, including in your own private life that you just really, you know, recommend steering away from sort of other, other don'ts, things to avoid. Don'ts. Uh-huh. Yeah. Obviously the, anything relationship status, the, what are we, yeah. anything like that, <laughs> you really want, to, you really want to avoid, um, try to avoid texting for him to entertain you. Anything like, okay. Or what you up to, or, just things that, and, and you've got to check in your own energy because it's funny how sometimes the exact same text, even the same words on a screen can have a different energy depending on your state. Um, but you want to check in and go, okay, I'm not, I'm not sending things which is just like, I'm bored. What you up to? These things are generally not, not a lot of good. Mm -hmm. Anything passive aggressive. Ugh. I had one friend who used to do this all the time and um, she would write things like, um, good friends, good friends text back. Uh, it's good to know which friends text back and which don't after I have, after I've read and not replied. <laughs> it's just, wow. that does not make me want to text back. <laughs> okay. Avoid anything passive aggressive. Um, what are the mistakes? Obviously anything, anything which is like, do you still like me? Or sometimes I wonder why you're even with me. Anything. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're going really down. <laughs> yeah, anything seeking assurance like that. Um, mm, 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 mm. And obviously repetitive things. If, you, if you've had a situation where you, you, know, you might have asked a question, he's answered, maybe you asked another question, he's just answered. You want to let him be leading some questions as well and be stimulating the conversation. So I wouldn't keep pushing forward in a conversation where he's not being your partner. Mm. You want to make that even. So it might take a few days off a guy at that stage. If he's just like, okay, he's either busy or he needs a bit of space to create more interest. Just mm -hmm. it's very tempting to try to do the work yourself. And a lot of my professional clients go, Oh, well, if I don't text him, he's going to, you know, he's going to lose interest. And, and that's a very doing mindset. Remember, men want to come to you. So sometimes if you're not getting the response, you just got to leave it for a few days a week and just let that rebalance. Right. I have a girlfriend like that right now. It works every single time, you know? I'm just like, hey, just, just give it a little space. She's like, oh my God, he, he was supposed to text me yeah. on Sunday and you already texted me on Wednesday, <laughs> you know? And he was like, so sweet. And, you know? <laughs> it's so funny. Space is really the energy of attraction, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're putting across good vibes. 
it's the good vibes and then the space away from the good vibes that recreates that cycle. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't really work with a lot of get your ex back type clients, mm-hmm. um, but on the occasion that I do where I think it's a healthy idea, um, space is, is their best friend. They think, oh, if I leave it too long, that my ex is going to forget me. And it works the other way. You know, if you, the longer you leave it, the more your ex remembers you. It's the mm-hmm. weirdest thing. Mm-hmm. And why is that? Because I think a lot of women who are watching this, they're like, I don't, I don't get that. Because the longer I wait, the more anxious I get. You know what I mean? As you're telling me, the longer yeah. the time wait, the better it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been shown by studies that men are more likely to look back on their previous relationships with a grass is greener point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're more likely to see their previous women in their lives in a positive light. Whereas women are not as likely to do that. Um, one of the likely reasons postured by the, the Sykes is that men just don't have as many close connections in their life. Mm. So if we only have four or five, then they're all pretty special. Whereas for a lot of women, they're that close with their girlfriends. So they might have 20, 30, 40 people throughout their life. They're that close with. So the men don't, on a connection level seem quite as significant because mm. they have it with their girlfriends. Mm. Interesting. That's like, I've never heard that perspective before. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's, it's a huge, I think a lot of women underestimate how much men just miss them and how much men miss that energy. Yeah, totally. Ladies take some notes. Okay. So next time when Mark says, give it some space, you know why? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, space is always, and, and there's the other worry that, oh, well, he's going to um, forget me or be with another woman or distract himself. And, and interestingly, that is kind of true. Men are also more likely to rebound and distract themselves with potentially another woman or whatever else. Mm-hmm. Um, but once that distraction melds away or falls away, which it inevitably does, that's when the real missing sets in. Ah, so the less anxious you are, ladies, the, the better. Like the more space you, and the more patience you have, the more you trust, the more likely he's just going to write out his own cycle and he's going to come back to you. Yeah, yeah, very commonly. And you know what? If he doesn't, he wasn't your person he anyway. Person. Yeah. So you wouldn't want him. Totally. Mark, what do you think about emojis? You know, we're like in this world of like emojis and women are sending like five emojis. And like- yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of emojis. Um, uh-huh. You've got you've to use them in the right context, but emojis are massive um, and they can really shift the text. Um, if you take something like, sorry, can't make it tonight, have fun with a full stop. Uh, the difference between sorry, can't make it tonight, have fun versus sorry, can't make it tonight, have fun with a cheers and a kiss emoji on the end is quite different. Wow, you're right. Like one's exactly. quite cold, it's, it's almost passive aggressive and the other is actually quite warm and um, cheerful. Right, right, all right. But is there something too, like there's too many emojis? Yeah, you can definitely look like a seven-year-old if you ever do it. <laughs> um, yeah, usually one or two. I think your best emoji emojis to go to. It's hard to go wrong with crying laughing emoji. That's a really, really good one. And it always, especially for inside jokes, anything like that, it's really good. Yeah. Um, the kiss emoji or the X on the end uh, are pretty solid too. The kiss emoji can sometimes be overkill, but the, the X on the end is, you can almost never go wrong with that, in my opinion. Uh, the blush emoji is probably one of my favorites. It, it airs this slight, it's kind of like this. It has a slight <laughs> sense of arrogance, but, but not so much that I think- <laughs> it, just like over, overconfidence. It's, it's a very like, Oh, should you be so lucky with like a blush emoji? It's very cute. It's a cute kind <laughs> of arrogance. Uh, the heart emoji is really great. The heart eyes emoji is great to show enthusiasm. That's a great energetic one. Um, the sly emoji can be fun if you want to like turn things a little bit sexual. What else? Even the cowboy or the glasses emoji can be fun to just be really cool. Just like put a cowboy hat on the text. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of good in emojis and particularly the embarrassed emoji with the one sweat bead is uh-huh. really, really good when you've said something stupid. I, <laughs> I once had a, I once had an that, ex. That one. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. That one's good as well. Actually, those two are similar and the monkey mouth emoji for when you're being cheeky, you put the one, the monkey. I, I once had an ex. Uh, it was only our second or third date. It must've been on maybe two dates. And she sent me this text, which was a screenshot of my own text 
asking what to reply to my text. So clearly that wasn't intended for me. Oh, crap. <laughs> right. She's, she screenshotted my text and asked what to respond. But instead of sending it to her friend, she sent it to me. So then you sent her back what to respond. <laughs> Which is quite embarrassing, uh, especially early dating. Yeah. It's very embarrassing, in fact. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But she, co she covered it up really well. How's this? She texted me, um, oh, God, sending the guy I've started dating screenshots asking what to text back to the guy I've started dating and then put two sweat emojis on it, uh, <laughs> embarrassed emojis. And she just covered it so well because she, she said, literally, this is what I've done. How embarrassing is this? And it turned from, oh, this is kind of weird to me having a good chuckle. Oh, <laughs> but that's good because that really gives women hope that you can, you can actually save it. You can, you can rescue yourself. Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah. So if you ever do that, there's this get out of jail <laughs> text. You know? <laughs> but but she, she called herself on it. She owned it. So it makes it less embarrassing whenever you own something. Not embarrassing at all, in fact. What are some of the best text messages that you either have personally received from a woman or that, you know, like maybe some of your clients, you know, if you've seen that from screenshots and they're like, wow, that, that was a really good one. Yeah. Like yeah, great. Yourself? That, that one I just described is probably one of the best just in terms of recovery. Yeah. Um, I had a couple on my phone that I screenshotted, um, but the best texts, honestly, are ones that just convey a really good energy. So I'll see if I've got the screenshot. I may not be able to pull it up, but I remember an ex who used to just text um, really high energy messages. It, she'd literally just say, hi, I want attention, all in capitals. Oh, really? And, <laughs> and because it's so needy ironically it becomes not needy because right. only someone who's not needy could send a text that needy right um, yeah. <laughs> so it actually i'll see if i can um i'll see if i've got it here i may not be able to find it in the short period of time but it, texts that convey a really good energy um in the wrong album screenshots texts that convey a really good energy and often you can use caps and just when you're sharing your vibe that's how you're going to have the best texts honestly just by sharing that that vibe yeah something like oh this is this is actually from from Jamia uh but this is an example where she just had a really good energy all she did if you can see is maybe can't wait oh well, so she just put yes nice. at all capitals yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just put a bunch of emojis so you can see it's just a case of getting energy across uh is the other one near there no i don't know where the other ones are uh, bugger but basically things that are that convey that vibe that you've mm -hmm. got enthusiasm mm -hmm. um hi i'm so excited for food you know with a couple of hard eye emojis um when can i see you i miss you those are really good texts once you're a little further along um so i miss you is like it's it's okay it's like not it in those contexts when i received it it was okay yeah 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 you've got to be good connected to someone yeah. about to go. Um, so that might be, you know, a few months in, but mm -hmm. when you're really building that, that vibe, yeah, that was, I loved receiving that. Oh, how did that make you feel as a man to receive that? Like, because a yeah, lot of women are telling me like, I can't say that, you know, I can't say that. So yeah. Awesome. Wanna... Just like, yeah, she's thinking about me and I'm like on her mind. And um, when you're really into someone, you, you absolutely, that's, it's great. Any other any other text messages that you were like, or the worst ones, you can also use the worst ones too that you've ever seen. <laughs> really good, really good ones that I've received. <laughs> and this is where, it, I'll, I'll tell you what, this is where it's worth making the point that a lot of the best stuff I've received is, is voice notes. Yeah, that's another thing I wanted to touch on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, you, you, you've got a lot more to gain with voice notes. When you say best text, I can think of a few. They're really good energy. Um, the one that I described before always right. stands out, the recovery. Right. right. Um, yeah, they're, they're mostly, most of the best ones I've received are affectionate. They're just enthusiasm to see me or enthusiasm for something. Right, right. If it's, if it's earlier on, rather than I miss you, it might be, oh my God, I miss crackers or whatever it is. Like yeah, I miss, yeah. I miss our movie night or it's just something lighter than, yeah. than you, uh, but absolutely progress to you. But yeah, I think the best general connection messages are moving to voice notes, mm -hmm. which is where you're really feeling someone's energy and you can really 
hear her. You can hear the femininity in her voice. You can hear the energy. That's mm-hmm. what's really going to draw me in, in the longer term and in a more deeper way. Mm-hmm. In a deeper way. And do you think there should be a progression or do you think like a woman can just like dive right in and just like just dive right in, start off, start off with the voice yeah. messages. Dive right in. Yeah. I mean, you can send a couple of texts and if it's something like, if it's less than two lines, you probably wouldn't voice note. Yeah. Right. If it's informational, yeah. see you at seven, that sort of stuff. Don't do that. Right. But yeah, I, I think how's your days and um, just sharing what you've been up to. Those things are, and, and this is, it's like a cheat code. Cause if you want to send giant long texts, if you actually were to write out the length of a voice note, it would be a text like that long. Right. Right. You could never in a million years text that, but you can send a 30 second voice note and it's not weird. It's actually good. Yeah. So this is where text text is like little punchy points where you like get a good emotion across and put a good vibe yeah. and then save 95% of your real connecting for voice notes mm. or above. Totally. I, I totally agree. I, I don't have patience for text messages. You know, that's why that's, I love the voice messages, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram, they all have them now. So there's, there's no reason you can't. And I think it's also a good way to see how available the man is, right? So if the, if the man is like secure and he's like good with himself, like he has no problem going to voice because it, it is a little step closer to intimacy mm. than text messages. So it's a little bit more like more available, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I've had women where it's just been a one way conversation. I've just voice noted and she's just texted and what? it's always a little, I a little like clue. Expected the opposite. Yeah, no, I've, I've had that quite a number of times and it's always a little clue that, um, hmm. with most of those women, they've been either not confident or a little overwhelmed by me with, with my job. There's usually been a, a bit of emotional unavailability every time I've encountered that. So mm, interesting. it's been a good, it's a good filterer as well. And then if it was from a woman's side, so would you recommend her saying, Hey, I'm noticing you're always texting. Like, I'd love to hear your voice. I mean, after she's already leaving all those voice messages, right? So it's not necessarily coming out of left field. So would you recommend for a woman to um, him or just like be- probably, probably not initially because it's pretty much implied just by the action that if, if it continues to happen, it's pretty much implied. Yeah. I'd be more likely to say, well, next time you're actually on a date or in person, um, one of see, if, see if it gets brought up somewhere and yeah. just playfully address it. Be like, I know I'm always like voicing you and you're always texting and just see his response. Cause it could be something like it could have a really confident response, which is like, yeah, I know. I just like, I'm not a big voice. I just prefer to do stuff in person. Or if he has kind of a weird response where he's like, yeah, it's, I don't really, I'm not really comfortable with that. You just, you just sort of got to gauge it um, mm-hmm. and then add all, the whole scenario together, which is, okay, he is texting or he's not. How consistent is he? Is he really showing up in person? Is he a bit inconsistent? You, it's a full picture. Mm-hmm. Sort of. mm-hmm. You agree? Awesome. Well, so, so much wisdom. Thank you so much for, for sharing that today. And I, I learned some stuff for sure because I, like I <laughs> I'm not really dealing with this, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and, no, and my pleasure. It's fun. It's it's important. It really is because if you get it wrong, there's a lot of you can lose a lot of lot if you get it wrong. Basically, I said what you. I love what you said in the beginning. You can either you know gain a little bit or lose a lot. You know? Yeah, yeah. You can <laughs> fuck everything up, or you can make it slightly better. <laughs> it's slightly. not the not the best proposition, but you, it's necessary in this modern world. Totally, totally. So I know at the end of every interview, I'm asking every man about the five qualities that he's personally attracted to the most yep. in a woman. Oh, it's what fun. What is for you, Mark? Yeah, what is it for me? Uh, well, we're going to kick off with expressiveness. Uh-huh. So I definitely say whether it's through text or in person, obviously, when she's in that uh, emotional expressiveness, expressing whatever she's feeling, very attractive. Uh, I would say uh, supporter or belief, like someone who really supports me, believes in me, is massive. Uh, vulnerability would be a big one. Assertiveness would be a big one. And sexual openness and sexual comfort mm, would be the other yeah. one. Totally, totally. See, they're always so different. Like every man I ask, I get different answers. Like, so oh, yeah? I can't wait. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that 
the expressiveness is big for me and just it moves into openness it moves into vulnerability assertiveness is really important and yeah just when you have that believer that's that's maybe more of a connection point the believer supporter but um i couldn't be with someone who didn't you know believe in me or support me mm-hmm. that would be a deal breaker oh totally i mean this is this is your purpose you know what i mean you you got somebody who has a, who's a champion right next to you you know yeah. And I love that you said vulnerability and assertiveness because that's that's an interesting balance because vulnerability is more on the feminine side and assertiveness is almost a little bit more on the like masculine side, right? So keeping that tension alive between the two. Yeah, I think I've never, it's interesting you say that. I've never thought, I'd, I've always seen vulnerability as a more of a feminine thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess I've never thought of assertiveness as, as masculine, but I suppose in, in some ways it can be. But I think it's you can do both uh, together. Uh, I remember um, almost getting into a, a. I had a guy try to, without going through the full story, I had a guy in Hong Kong, basically big, fast, strong dude, try to start a fight with me. And uh, I wasn't, he got right up in my face, got nose to nose with me, and was wanting an apology for me for something I said. And I wasn't going to apologize, <laughs> but I wasn't going to fight him either. So we ended up in this kind of standoff for, it seemed like an eternity, but it was maybe only three or four minutes. Um, but I was, he was basically kind of pushing right on my nose. I was saying, look, I'm not going to fight you because you're bigger and stronger than me, but I'm also not going to apologize. And it was just kind of a stalemate. Um, and it was a good example where I'm being vulnerable because I'm like, I'm going to lose a fight, bro. I get that. So in a sense, I'm being vulnerable, but I'm also not disasserting you know i'm still staying in my space um and i think it's an important point that even in in relationships just in general you can be vulnerable and assertive at the same time they're they're not mutually exclusive with your boundaries you can say hey you know this is this is a boundary this is how it feels this is it hurts and this is important to me so it's going to happen you can still get what you want without having to be verbally um like like aggressive smackdown yeah yeah like yeah i think it's yeah usually passive aggressive because women are not outright aggressive you know <laughs> yeah and passive aggressive is usually a struggle with direct assertiveness right right totally so I, I think i think um someone shared a thing recently that said if the more the more effective you are with your actions the less you need to be a hard ass with your words mm. Right. So if you're really, really good at asserting yourself using your actions, you can actually be very vulnerable with your words, mm. incredibly vulnerable because you know your actions will back you up. You're just like, mm-hmm. hey, I don't want this to be real. You know, it makes me so sad to have to put this boundary in with you. It is going to happen. Wow. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're saying that, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very important because I think they're often seen as opposites, especially by a lot of the career women I work with, which is I have to be non-vulnerable to be assertive. Actually, you can be totally vulnerable and be assertive. Mm-hmm. Your actions just have to lead. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a rose, right? Like you have this rose that's like so fragile in a way. And mm. the fragrance like goes away, you know, after a few weeks. Um, but then you have the thorns, you know? So like without yeah. the thorns, there would, the beauty wouldn't be there. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Example too, like you know? yeah, yeah. Of those qualities. Well, awesome. Mark, I know you have a gift for the women who want to continue this journey, whether it's like texting or what, what to do in quarantine or how to get them to commit to you or whatever you're struggling with ladies when it comes to dating. And so what, what do you have for them? Uh, we got the 12 texts to make him yours. So mm-hmm. those are some example wording texts. You can use them word for word, but I probably wouldn't just note the energies. Just note the energies that are coming across the vibes, adjust it to your own language, whatever you would say. Uh, and you'll see that, the, the kind of concepts I'm talking about around what you're putting across in those. All right. For text messages to make him yours. Awesome. The link is below, right below this video. Thank you so much for being here today, Mark. It was My fun. pleasure, Antia. Thank you so much for having me. It's always fun seeing you. It's, I've always learned so much. You know, I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know that about you. I didn't know that about you. <laughs> oh, thank awesome, you. Awesome. All right, ladies. I'll talk to you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.